All right, so at this point, I'm pretty sure the ship has only a few minutes left. I mean, look at that. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back in Floating Sandbox, and today, we are checking out the Andreadoria. See ya guys, let's get into the video. So here we have the Andreadoria. I want to thank Tim Can for giving me a uh, copy of this. Um, so this is pretty cool. We got some interior here. Obviously, you can see the floors and whatnot. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and start out with a realistic sinking. So let's go ahead and quickly change the weather. All right, so there we go. Now the weather is kind of overcast, and as you can see, it's a bit darker. I tried to make it a bit foggy, but um, unfortunately, you can only go so far in this game. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and realistically sink the Andrea Doria. The real ship actually sank because it got collided by another vessel called the Stockholm. Its bow ripped into the side of the ship and basically basically caused a massive hole and the ship rolled onto one side and sank. So we're going to recreate that damage and see how the ship sinks in game. Now in real life the ship rolled over heavily to the starboard side however it's just going to sink level here because it's a 2D simulation. So yeah let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start the damage from the top and work my way down and the reason I'm going to do that is so the water doesn't immediately flood in. So yeah let's go ahead and do that so we're going to start damaging this level here and just work our way down. So Obviously, this is where the bow kind of ripped into the ship. So basically, what I'm doing is recreating the bow shape here in the damage. And now, we're going to quickly damage this lower area. And that's going to replicate the damage of a bow going into the uh, side of the Andrea Doria. So, as you can see, water is rapidly beginning to fill those lower compartments. We have about uh, two main compartments here with... Um, basically these two compartments on the side so four compartments in total and now we're starting to see water actually spill over these compartments go down this uh, stairway or access way here and into this compartment so now we have a total of about five compartments flooding here so uh, luckily the uh, double bottom has not been damaged there so the uh, ship may stay afloat for a bit longer with that actually not damaged but we'll see how long the ship actually stays afloat so it's only been a few seconds and already the water is now flooding six compartments you can see we've got one two three four five and six here and not only that the water is actually flooding up and over the actual outside water line for some reason and um yeah that's not going to be good for the ship and we're already starting to notice a forward uh tilt there so yeah not really good for the ship and the water is rapidly taking over the vessel and i can now report that seven compartments are flooding this looks to be some form of generator room or something like that i'm not very familiar with the interior of the andrea doria so i do apologize if i get things wrong and now the water is already being spilled into an eighth compartment which looks like a boiler or uh, engine room space so yeah now actually what's interesting if you've ever seen images of the stockholm after the collision its bow was completely torn off so so you can imagine that the bow was actually lodged inside the hull of the ship, which is truly frightening. Actually, one of the passengers that was sleeping in the Andrea Doria in the collision zone ended up on one of the decks of the Stockholm after it collided. So she somehow survived the collision and um, yeah, very lucky for her. But unfortunately, the vessel is rapidly filling with water and it seems like I made a mistake here. This is not the compartment that's flooding this smaller compartment is flooding but it still counts as an eighth compartment here's an example of water actually flooding down into a compartment right here you can see water is actually filling this space and then making its way down and then rapidly filling this space and then pouring into this compartment so yeah really interesting how water floods through the ship i've always found that really cool so yeah a lot of that area near the collision is pretty much underwater and you can see how it's actually spread out from the collision zone so yeah very unfortunate what's happening here but um yeah we'll see what happens happens in the uh, in the near future one is right over here water is actually making its way up this uh, ventilation shaft or something here a stairwell and it's actually beginning to flood into these spaces on either side so basically dropping the bow even further into the water now going aft here we have the ninth compartment flooding this is an engine room or boiler room space and um, there's ventilation in here so that water is just gonna pass all the way up into these upper spaces which is not going to be great for the ship because it's just going to take it down faster so yeah not really good for the andrea doria it's slowly settling into the water and the water itself is actually making its way through the ship very slowly and methodically finding spaces to kind of trickle through and flood into other compartments so yeah okay so i've actually zoomed out here and the one thing that i am noticing is how the hull is beginning to flex 
If you look at the stern and follow the double bottom all the way forward, you'll notice as soon as we get to the brake area where the collision occurred, you're actually getting bending. So there's some actual stress going on there, which could actually cause a fracture at some point if the bow doesn't fill with water soon. Because look at all that buoyancy in the bow, that's holding it up. And that may cause the double bottom to just give way, but who knows? Um, it looks like the ship is still pretty strong right now, so... We'll see how long it lasts. At this point, I'm just waiting for something to happen here, water to breach another bulkhead, but at this point, it seems to be staying solid. So, yeah, um, that doesn't look right. Um, did something just happen? Uh-oh. Um, okay, so it looks like something just happened here. Um, I think the stresses that are building up on the structure just caused a fracture here, and now the double bottom has been breached. So that is not good for the ship. That means more water is going to fill the structure. And take a look at this. You can already see water pooling in the bulbous bow. And that's going to fill up. And I don't know if it's going to escape here. It doesn't look like it will. But it's going to add more weight to the, uh, the ship. And it's going to pull it down. And I'm already starting to see if we look closely here. The ship is slowly beginning to settle into the water even more. So even just a little bit of water floating into the ship is really dooming it. So yeah. And there it is, folks. The water has breached the ventilation area on board and is spilling over a watertight division. So, yeah, unfortunately, the Andrea Doria is going to lose another compartment to the sea. And, um, yeah, she is really on her last legs here. I mean, look at that. You can really start to see the structure stressing here. And that's probably why the double bottom has just fractured there, at least the portion that's inside the vessel. So yeah, at this point, this is really not good for the ship. She is really going down. And actually, take a look at this. The water is now breaching another deck in the forward portion. And this is where I think the water is going to make its way into the forward part of the ship. And that's going to be really dramatic because the ship is just going to drop like a stone, or at least that's how I see it. So yeah. Okay, so I want to quickly divert your attention from the main sinking where all the water's flooding into this right here, this spire of water. You may be wondering, what is that? Is that a glitch? Well, no, that is water being forced up the ventilation pipes. Now, that's bad because the ship is now getting flooded from the upper decks and that water is then spilling down the stairs and then going back down into the ship, which is adding weight to the structure, making it more unstable and uh, making it more prone to, uh, well, rapidly plunging. So, yeah, we may see more of this in the future, but this is pretty much what happened on board the Oceanos, except it wasn't the ventilation shaft, it was the sewage pipes. So, yeah. And what's also happened here is we're seeing a stress fracture, which has most definitely been caused by the flexing of the hull. So, yeah, very unfortunate there. It may actually split, it may separate. We've already seen a fracture right here at the double bottom, so who knows what's going to happen. But at this point, this area here that's been dry for the longest time is now flooding. So, yeah. All right, so zooming out for a moment, you can really see how stressed the structure is. Now, if you were in an area like this and somehow you missed the collision and you just woke up or if you were trapped in your cabin, your door is not going to open. There is a lot of compression forces happening here and your door will be wedged into the frame so it will not be able to open. They'll have to kick it down or basically find another way out because now things are going to be displaced and because the ship is bending like this, this is irreversible damage that's being caused to the ship. You know, a ship is designed to flex but not this much. This is like, this is extreme flexing here. So this is probably going to cause major structural damage, but it doesn't matter at this point. The ship is quite literally on its last legs. I mean, look at this. This is, uh, this is irreversible damage being caused and it is rapidly flooding. So yeah. All right. So I've gotten up my chainsaw tool to elaborate on what I was talking about when it came to compression forces. So let's go ahead and go over here. So we have an exposed section of beams and we're going to go ahead and just kind of cut a section. So here we go. Look at that. That is not okay for the ship. That is going to cause massive problems, especially later in the sinking. So even doing that has already compromised the structure in a very small way. That has added a fracture and that may cause the ship to actually break at some point, but who knows. But you can really see how compressed this section is. This is a regular length here. That's how it was before. And now look at it. It is very short at this point. So you can see that there's a lot of compression going on and the forces are just immense. So yeah, not a great place to be if you're on board. So 
yeah, this is what a door frame would look like on board the ship in this area. It would just be compressed and maybe the door may have actually popped out of its frame, so who knows. Okay, so I brought up my chainsaw tool to elaborate on what I said about compression forces. So let's go ahead, let's zoom in here. So this is a pretty uh, stressed area. So let me go ahead and just kind of cut a support beam here. Whoa, okay. So look at how it bounced together like that. That's not normal for a ship that's just regularly floating. That's a ship that's under tension or under compression forces. You can see how it's actually bounced together and even though it was compressed here, you can see how closer together it's gotten here. So yeah, this is kind of what a door frame would look like. It would be compressed at the bottom and at the top, but less so on the top than it was on the bottom. So yeah, not great and that actually might cause the ship to break. So uh uh-oh. Alright, so at this point, I'm pretty sure the ship has only a few minutes left. I mean, look at that. The ship is bending really badly, and uh-oh, that's not good. It looks like the water has finally started to enter that forward compartment there. So, yeah, this is the end for the Andrea Doria. It's about to go down very fast now. So, yeah, let's watch this. Alright, the forecastle deck is now underwater, and I think we should be seeing something pretty interesting in a moment here. So if we go over here, we'll notice some rattling or shaking. So, yep, look at that. See how they're rattling? They're kind of shaking independently. That means that the stresses are being relieved. And you're actually now starting to see a regular rectangle shape reappearing here. So that means that the stresses are being relieved from the vessel, but this is it. This is the plunge of the entry dory. The forecastle is gone. The uh, superstructure is going under, and there goes the bridge there. Wow. Holy cow. So now you're actually seeing water coming up the large ventilation shafts, and um, now the water is actually pouring into the funnel. So, yeah, now you're going to see a lot of water flood the superstructure, and um, this is going to be quite interesting to see. So there goes the funnel dropping under, and a lot of water is coming in. Look at all that. That is crazy. And look. There it is, pouring down that ventilation pipe that was once actually flooding up, is now flooding down, and there she goes. Beautiful ship. Once again, a shame that she's going down. Now, as the storm goes vertical here, I just want to point out that this sinking took 43 minutes. Now, obviously, this video is getting cut down, so it's not going to be that long, but, um, yeah, pretty long for a sinking in floating sandbox, and really realistic. We got to see the water slowly flood through the ship, and then eventually take down as well as some compression forces and stresses in the vessel. But, uh, yeah, now it's completely vertical at this stage, and uh, we'll see what happens next. Well, there she goes, heading straight to the bottom. Her fantail is just about to go under, and there it goes, right under the waves. So, it's gonna hit bottom in just a moment here. And boom, there's the collision. The bow is struck bottom, and there it is. There is the fracture there. So I was right. The um, the bow is separating from the superstructure. However, obviously not when I anticipated. I thought it was going to do it during the sinking, but nope. And you can see that that fractured area is actually beginning to get compressed. And um, there goes the double bottom. And um, yeah, so that is the wreck of the entry door. It's going to settle to the bottom here, but... Um, it's probably just going to be a mangled mess after. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll send you some, guys. Goodbye.